Good afternoon and welcome to Floss Tube number 36. You'll have to pardon my extremely boring background. <laughs> we are still um, in flux here and we might be for quite some time. Uh, we're kind of changing things up slowly. And right now this is uh, this is my my setup. Um, so hopefully it'll change soon and be be a little more, a little less like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know how to describe this, but it's empty and depressing looking. <laughs> But it's the best we got going right now because um, other things are other areas are are like cluttery and furniture filled and stuff like that. So So here we are. You'll just have to bear with me. So floss tube number 36. It is um, Monday September 30th and um, And we are you know on the eve of dark October stitching and just like I did last year. I'm going to um, I don't remember exactly what I did last year, but I know I did a dark, a dark October stitching episode. So um, I'm going to do that again, um, amongst other things. Um, so I'm going to show my, um, during October I'm going to um, try, unless I get bored, um, I'm going to try stitching 100% uh, Halloween-ish um, themed things. I'm going to attempt to not have any new starts. I am now down to 48 whips, and I'd like to keep that number going down. But um, I will allow myself a start or two um, that's dark October appropriate if I, um, if I just can't help myself. So, um, but we'll see. Um, let's see. Before we get into that, though, I wanted to give a shout out. I haven't done shout outs the last couple of times. Um, I've, uh, honestly, I haven't been watching that much Floss Tube, which I feel a little guilty about because, you know, I'm asking people to watch me, so I should be watching people too, but... Um, I just haven't been watching that much. I've been reading a lot and, um, and cross-stitching a lot, of course, which, which, um, you know, lends itself to watching Floss Tube, but I've also been listening to audiobooks at the same time and, um, and honestly watching, like, crochet tutorials and stuff. So I just haven't had, um, as much time to watch Floss Tube as I, as I, um, uh, should be should be so but I do have one one shout out um Gables Stitcher I discovered her um pretty recently um she had made a comment on one of my videos and I went and checked her out and realized I was not subscribed and had never never really watched her so um so I watched a few of her videos and I'm gonna she's gonna be one that I think I'm gonna go back and like watch everything um, I watched her Dark October stitching video, and I watched her um, most recent video, at least. And um, I have some pretty serious, like, stash envy <laughs> for her. She, she and I have a lot in common um, with what we like to stitch, and, um, and uh, she definitely likes a lot of the, like, same designers I do and the same themes that I do and stuff like that. So, um, so Gable's Stitcher, that's Gable's with an S, a Stitcher. Um, I'll try to, I'll try to put a link below. I'm not, I'm famously not real great about that, but I will try to put a link below to her, to her channel. Um, because if you like my stuff, you'll probably like her stuff. So, uh, she's awesome. All right, uh, next up... I've got my list, but it's out of reasonable order. <laughs> um, so haul. I got. Oh, I didn't get very much haul. Um, as per my usual, I got a couple of things from Bendy Stitchy, and I will show you those. I also got um, threads from Trisha at 3 All Threads. I'll go ahead and, ahead and show them to you this time um, because um, because I haven't even opened them and looked at them myself. That how's that for neglect? Um, so. Moonlit Path, which um, I actually already have some of that, but uh, but I do like it. Portabella, oh that's nice. Silver Fern, Tin Bucket, I finally have Tin Bucket. Don't need it anymore, but I finally have it. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Tropical Ocean. It's showing up a little grayer on here. It's that. It's more. It's more. 
like that. A little more blue than it shows up on there. Um, green tea leaf. Straw bonnet. Toffee. Ooh, this is nice. This is a nice golden brown color. Tortoise shell. Verdigris. Ooh, I like this. I like that. That brown, green, blue mix. That's really, that's really nice. Okay, so those are this this month's um, three all threads threads um, and um, we're getting towards the end of of the end of the gentle arts so then I'm not sure what I'm gonna do I want to keep supporting Trisha and um, so I'll have to decide what to what to switch to um, I mean, not just supporting Trisha. Obviously, it's <laughs> there's some selfishness to <laughs> to it too. But um, she has uh, some other nest egg possibilities, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna look at uh, what else she's got going, and um, almost certainly switch to something else, not just quit. So um, she has really great customer service and good prices. So you know, you should check her out if you uh, if you um, if you haven't yet. That's three all threads, and she has a. Etsy shop and she has a Facebook group um, and she sells all kinds of stuff and she's a real nice lady. She also has a really good floss tube channel which I have also not watched recently. Um, here's my here's my nerdy mug today. Um, effect affect the effect of caffeine can greatly affect my mood. In case you have trouble remembering the difference between those two words. Uh, all right. Um, oh, so let me finish. Then from Bendy Stitchy, I got a couple of things. Um, I, cause I have to have all the, like I should at some point I should do a, um, uh, like a stash parade of all my Just Nans. <laughs> cause I have, I don't know how many I have at this point, but I keep buying Just Nan and I keep not doing Just Nan. But I love Just Nan. Anyway, I got this from Benny Stitchy. It's Christmas Eve. It's with the it's with the embellishments. So it comes with the it comes with like a cute little reindeer and some nice nice mill hill, mill hill beads. There it is. And I got this one because of the Nutcrackers. Um, my son. I've never been a fan of Nutcrackers, except now I am because my son was a big fan of Nutcrackers. And so Nutcrackers are just one of those things that now, now I love because he loved when he was young. I don't know if he still cares about Nutcrackers or not, but those things don't go away as far as, <laughs> as far as the parents are concerned. Sorry, I'm gonna have a sneezing fit, I feel like. Mm, pardon me. And then I got a, um, this is a started project already, um, but just barely started. It's a small project, Nimu, Nimue, somebody tell me how to pronounce that. Um, and uh, like, I don't know what you do with that E. That's my cat. I usually have the door closed. But she's been really needy lately, and um, and now that our old cat has passed, our other old cat has passed, um, we had to keep a lot of rooms blocked off with the other cat because she would sometimes potty in places she wasn't supposed to. So any place that was that we were at all concerned about her going to the bathroom, we kept closed off from her. And so, but now I we had. To, let things a lot more open since the kid is gone and that troublesome cat is gone we're letting Nina the other cat go wherever she wants she might come visit at some point she's not a very nice cat she's cute and she seems like she's gonna live forever she's 15 or 16 years old and she doesn't have any problems and she's like she still jumps like 
across great distances from one piece of furniture to the next and stuff. She's super frisky and active. She's just not very nice. Um, <laughs> she's just a demanding bratty cat. So she might make some noise at us. And um, we joke that she only knows four letter words because that's what it sounds like. It sounds like she's cussing at you all the time. And, um, and uh, but she is cute, which is her the only requirement. Anyway, um, fairy dust is what this is called. And it came with a thread and it came um, started. And um, I don't know if um, Bendy started this herself or is that the right way? I think, I think that's the right way. I don't know if Bendy started it herself or if she got it from somebody else. And, um, but anyway, um, the stitching looks good and I could easily tear it out and start it again myself if I was feeling particularly anal about it. But, um, it looks like whoever did this, if it was Bendy or somebody else, does their did their X's in the same way I do mine. And it, it looks very similar to the way mine would on the back and stuff. So I don't think, um, I don't think there would be any problem with me just continuing on. Um, I don't think, uh, I think it would, uh, it would look just fine. So, um, anyway, and I, I like new, 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 new patterns, however you say it. Um, uh, pardon me. Oh, my nose. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but anyway, that's a cute little, a cute little pattern. It wouldn't take me very long to do that one, I don't think. Uh, my other pattern by them that I have is my my um, Le Manege Dallas that I haven't worked on in a long time that I should get out because that's a great pattern. Um, it's a fantastic pattern. I need to I need to touch that one, <laughs> um, but not in October because it's not really in October a dark October appropriate project. And then the other thing I got um, is the next. Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, which, which I will go ahead and do a flip through of this because uh, that was appreciated last time I did that. So, um, so let's just do it. Um, it. This is just a great magazine. And this is, um, it must be the October edition. It looks very October-y. Um, 2019 fall issue. So, volume five, issue three. I'm sorry for the sniffles. That's probably not very pleasant sounding. Um, but I don't want to stop this video. I just want to get it done. Um, so, punch needle patchwork pumpkins. Um, that is by Deb Boudreaux of Rustic Country Handcrafts. I recognize her. Like, I recognize her face. I don't know who she is, but I recognize her face. I don't know, maybe she's been on somebody's floss tube or something like that. I don't know. Um, maybe she just looks familiar. Um, Salem Mass. Um, designed by Joyce Reed of Joyce Reed Folk Art. Very primitive looking witch with her kitty, kitty and bird. Um, I'm gonna try not to show this pattern. Sorry, I think I might have shown a pattern already. Um, Harvest Moon. This is a punch needle by Janine Hop, Hoppe, or Hap, of Two Old Crows. This is kind of cute. Bunny rabbit looking at the moon with a pumpkin. Well, that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. I don't see a lot of bunny rabbits in Halloween -y designs. Eye of Newt. This is a cross stitch. These mag this magazine tends to like alternate between cross stitch and punch needle for the most part. Eye, Eye of Newt designed by Nicole Franklin of Kanickies. Kinnick of Kanickies. 
um, from www.knickies.com. This is a cute pattern. I would do that. I like that. Um, it's a, there's a couple of gentle arts suggested in there, chili pepper and piney woods. It's only four, um, only four threads. Oh, a couple of gentle arts and also a couple of classic color works with DMC conversions for all of it. Um, nice full color pattern, big, a good size with some finishing instructions if you want to do it like they show in the picture. Um, an article about Cecilia's Samplers um, Needle Workshop. That's kind of nice. Supporting local needlework shops. I appreciate that. That's in Branson, Missouri. Some pictures of people at Cecilia's and a nice long like three page article on it. Several pictures. Oh my gosh, more pictures. I'm not gonna show you this because like you should buy the magazine. Um, I don't want to show you everything in the magazine, um, but it's a nice long article. Um, punch needle called Bumpy, designed by Julie Thomas of the Old Tattered Flag. I like that white pumpkin. The bumpy thing is kind of cute too. Uh, it's a uh, Valdani all Valdani threads though, and they don't provide, I don't see a DMC conversion. Ooh. Um, yeah, I might, I reserve the right to change my mind, but I just can't imagine spending that kind of money on, on punch needle threads, because I know it uses a lot of thread. Um, oh, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie of Lindy Stitches. I love her more and more. One of these days I have to get one of her patterns. She has several that I just really, really like. Um, this one is good. This is called No Good for Man Nor Beast, designed by Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches. Um, and it's a weather cock that swings to the east, proclaims no good for man nor beast. That's really cute. I like that. She just has such a good, quirky sense of humor combined with like really nice designs. Um, is she's suggesting gentle arts, all of which I probably have, um, and um, with DMC conversions. So, and she's also listed Sullivan's numbers on here too. Oh, I like this. Sunflower Moon Punch Needle, designed by Michelle L. Palmer of Michelle Palmer Art. That's nice. I like that. I have a little thing for sunflowers. Um, DMC with one Valdani. So that's a little more reasonable if you ask me. Um, oh yeah, Primitive Hair. I knew as soon as I saw this that it must be the Primitive Hair. Enter If You Dare by Isabella Ab Abiati of the Primitive Hair. Um, it's probably on some of her fancy um, fabric that you could buy. But you could do that on a lot of different fabrics. I think it's just it's just DMC 310. That's all it is. Um, cross stitching and back stitching in DMC 310. And where's her? Mm, uh, um, 30 count linen dark spell, which is her is is the fabric she used, and that is fabric from her from her web shop. Um, I've never used her fabric. It looks beautiful, but I've just never been willing to like wait for wait for it to come. Plus 30 count is kind of like an in-between size that's not my favorite. Um, although I shouldn't really say that. I don't know. I don't actually know if I've used 30 count. Um, so a B, the, uh, this is a uh, punch needle. A B designed by Barbara Shores of Village Folk Art. This is kind of cute. I do like bees. I don't like bees. Not in real life. I hate them. But um, I like them in cross stitch, etc. <laughs> and they're necessary. We need bees. I just am kind of terrified of them. Um, some DMC and some Valdani. Uh, oh, this is 
another designer that I have got to stitch at some point um, because um, I love like most of her designs and I don't and I haven't stitched any of them. Autumn Bounty designed by Barbara Anna Astre Mendez uh, of Barbara Anna Designs and it's another basically tiny writer. Um, a little writer writing something. What is that that he's writing? Some sort of bird? I don't know what that is. What kind of bird is that? Um, I don't think it says. <laughs> is it supposed to be a turkey? Oh, it's probably supposed to be a turkey. It's a weird looking turkey, but I don't care. I'd stitch it. Um, some ads. Ooh, Sickle Moon. I, ooh, I like this one. Um, Valdani with with a DMC conversion happily. Um, Sickle Moon designed by Rose Clay of Three Sheet Studio. I like that one. Spider and spider web and pumpkins and moon. I like it. Oh, and uh, something from um, Twin Peak Primitives. I do love the Twin Peak Primitives. They are nice ladies and they have some great designs. Tradition from Ancestors. Um, but that is a, that is a cute design. Um, come fly with me. This is really cute. Uh, punch needle. Um, by Nancy Ariano of the Cooperage. Um, this is really cute. I like that a lot. Um, thread gatherer sheep's silk threads with no DMC conversion. Um, but I'm sure you could look at that and pick your own colors too. So I shouldn't gripe. Um, trick or treat. Jacko, Jacko Pincushion uh, by Rebecca Noland of Lucy Bean. Cute little scared looking pumpkin. Um, Autumn's Best by, um, designed by Kathy Brown of the Teacher's Pet. It's nice. I like the leaves. I like the like the swirly effect, you know, that you can use do with um with punch needle, you know, to add variety to it as opposed to like I mean you could just do straight lines or whatever, but getting creative with that stuff that's that's fun. You can sort of make it your own. Vol Danny. So, like the punch needle people, they like to use expensive threads. I'm generally a fan of expensive threads. Um, maybe I'm wrong about how much floss, how much floss punch needle uses compared to cross stitch. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, pumpkin, bird, and tulip. Designed by Teresa Miller of Teresa's Primitive Treasures. This is cute. I like that funky colored pumpkin. I like the colors in this. They're different. Um, gentle Arts with DMC Conversions. Ooh, I like this. I really like Teresa Kogut's um, punch needle designs. Um, I would bet, be willing to bet if I ever do take up punch needle, um, which I'm not promising to do, but if I ever do take up Punch Needle, I would be willing to bet that I'll be starting with something by Teresa Kogut. Um, Prim Harvest. Plus I love white pumpkins. I've never stitched a white pumpkin to my knowledge, but uh, one of these days I will. There are plenty of good patterns with, with white pumpkins. Um, Harvest Blessings. Oh, this is another one by Joyce Reed Folk Art. Um, I thought so, because it looks very similar to the other one. Very prim. Um, Harvest Blessings. Uh, 
DMCs. Ooh. This is nice. I like the colors in this. Autumn Harvest by Roberta Jackson of Dogwood Tales Arts. This is really nice. I love the bright, the bright colors. I hope they're really that bright in real life because I love those bright pumpkins. Um, some Valdani and some DMC. That one looks pretty complicated. There's a lot of shading, a lot of shading on that pumpkin. I'm not gonna show it to you, but when you look at the pattern, you can see that it's um, a lot less simple than it appears when you when you first when you just look at the picture. Okay, and then um, the lovely Vanna Pfeiffer the, with the creative twist. Um, just like last time, they don't provide a pattern, but this is all about how to finish something like that. This finishing looks significantly less intimidating to, than the last than the last uh, um, than in the last. Um, edition of this magazine um, that all, that kind of looks like something I might even be able to do um, just taking a look quick look to see what she says yeah the yeah the the list of um, the list of like um, materials needed are not not crazy She doesn't express that I can see. She doesn't express um, an opinion about how easy this is, but it looks much easier than her previous than the previous article. Um, yeah, that looks fun. I probably wouldn't do it, but <laughs> but it looks doable. <laughs> um, some ads, and that is it. Um, anyway, this is a great magazine. Available at my Joanne. Probably available at your Joanne's too. So, great magazine. All right, so now I'm going to show you um, my my finish and my whips before I go on to Dark October. So, I um, finished what I thought I would finish. I finished my Bothy Threads Halloween. Not, not Halloween, although all the Bothy Threads look a little bit um, Halloween-y. Kind of spooky. Um, both the threads Wizard of Oz and I will be giving away this pattern um, I got it as a kit there's um, there were they were generous with the with the floss but I don't think generous enough that you could stitch it again uh, with just the floss the floss that uh, I have left over um, I do have the, um, I used the, one thing I did that was different is I did the shoes in silver. I had enough silver that came with the kit to, um, to finish the shoes too with no problem, even though the shoes were supposed to be stitched in red. If you would like me to send, if you win this pattern and you would like me to send the red metallic floss with you, um, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. Or... I'll just stick it in the I'll just stick it in the thing, and you can decide if you want to use it. So, if you want to be entered to win this, what I want you to put first off be 18 or older, um, not to win this, but to win the pattern. Um, be 18 years or over. Um, don't mention giveaway, etc. Um, tell me, say, um, say red or silver, um, because. Uh, in the movie, her shoes are ruby red, and in the books, her shoes are silver, and me being a bookie person, that's why I went with silver. So, um, I'll send you the, the red floss regardless, but let me know that you want to be entered by this, for this, by putting the word silver or the word red in your, in your, um, in your comment. And if you want to talk to me about, you know, um, why you would or would not choose to do the do the shoes which color um, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't mind knowing that too but if you put the word red or silver I will enter you in the drawing which I will do next time two to three weeks from now probably then the other things I worked on 
I worked on two other whips, two other cross cross stitch whips. I have some crochet stuff, but uh, two other cross stitch whips. Um, basically, what I thought I would work on. I got out coastal views, and let me show you. Um, let me show you what it looked like when it's finished. I'm not going to show you a picture of what this looked like before because I did about a thousand stitches, but they were all in brown and and it's all in that all in the same exact thread. A thousand stitches in the same exact thread. Um, basically, a dark brown. Wait, that's not right. Just filling in some of. Some of this stuff up here, super boring, but necessary. And it's kind of what I felt like doing was filling in, so I did. So when last you saw it, there was a lot more like gaps up where, where there's not as many gaps now. So just trying to get that stuff filled in. I love this project. Um, there are places in this project that will go a lot faster. <laughs> this tunnel is a real, to put it nicely um, but I love it that's a dimensions gold coastal view that's what it's called then the only other thing I worked on was my octopus because I am just trying to keep on working on this thing um, and I also won't show you a picture of it. Uh, I put about 500 stitches in. Uh, really, I spent most of my time working on finishing that both these threads when I wasn't crocheting. So, um, but I have just done more filling in. Just working on getting some of those gaps off to this side filled in as I go. It's beautiful, it's easy to work on, but you can't really see what I've done. Not at this point. But um, I just, I just love working on this thing. Gives me just a great deal of comfort and joy to work on it. It's easy to work on and the colors are beautiful. The, the, the floss is wonderful. Um, and it makes me think of my kid who seems to be doing very well, by the way. Now I'm gonna show you all of my Dark October whips. And then I'm going to show you some possible Dark October starts. So first off, um, this is a design by um, Ink Circles. I'll show you a picture of, of the finished, what it'll look like when it's finished, sort of. Um, but I'm doing it over one and going to do it twice on this fabric I dyed myself to make a biscornin. So, um, um, I haven't worked on this in a while, but I love it. I love this, um, I love this fabric I dyed. It's like a sherbet, like an orange sherbet color. I think it's perfect for, for this. Um, dyed it myself. Um, so anyway, I'm going to, uh, going to, um, stitch this twice and make it a biscornu. I believe I am doing, I believe it is, looks to me like it's 32 count. Um. And hopefully it's even. It won't be good to Biscornu if I discover it's not even when all is said and done. I think it's even though. Um, so there's that. And then I am... I showed you this, I believe, last time. I have just had a bear start on um, Doreen Jones. Doreen Jones, it was a stitch along. I think it's called... I think it's just called Spooky Halloween. Um, I'll show you a picture of what it'll look like when it's finished. And here is where I am. I'm stitching this on Pumpkin by Weeks Dye Works. I want to say it's 36 count. Um, next I have one that I'm not going to show you a picture of um, because it's hard to get a picture of this. Um, it's on an app 
And once I downloaded the, once I purchased the pattern on the app, the picture of the finished design actually disappeared. So all you can see is the pattern itself. It's just a weird, it's not, it's a, like a Russian app. It's called Cross Stitch Saga. And anyway, it's a black work pattern. It's going to be a spider. I almost never work on this. It's um, difficult, but I love it. I do love, I do love black work. I find it challenging though. Um, but anyway, that's a big, like, sp that's one spider leg. So it's pretty big. I don't know what this fabric is. It's something I bought off of eBay. Um, it's not, oh, it is. Okay, I was gonna say it's not a uh, Zweigert, but it is, um, but it doesn't. And it's Edinburgh, um, 36 count, but it's a solo die. So um, you can't really get it anyway, but it's a good, it's a good color for, for this pattern, I think. So there's that. I haven't worked on that in a long time for obvious reasons. It's just kind of a pain. And it's also like the app is kind of a pain to deal with, which is too bad because they have several similar black work like bug designs that I'd like to do all of, but I don't think I will because um, I'm just not finding the app very friendly to work with. Um, oh, this one. Oh, this one's been calling to me lately. I almost took it out a couple of days ago, but I decided not to because with... Um, dark October coming up. I didn't want to burn myself out on on Halloween stuff um, before I had to work on, but I don't have to, before I intended to work on straight up just Halloween stuff for the month. So this is, um, Halloween in Quilt by Corey E. Batakori, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and here's where I am. This one is calling to me. I love it. It's not super easy to work on because this is, this is beautiful fabric. Um, I believe it's under the sea fabric. It's a color called Autumn. I bought it at Stitch Con, um, and it's 46 count, which I can see just fine. Um, I am doing it one, one over two, of course, um, in DMC, and it is beautiful. The fabric is beautiful. The stitching is beautiful, but um, the sewing method doesn't work very well on it because the, the threads are just so close together that I just can't really get the needle to, to do the sewing method with it. So I have to do the, the stabbing method, which is not my favorite and slows me down. So this will probably be my one and only um, 46 count adventure. However, it's a pretty big project, so maybe I'll change my mind by the time I get finished with it. Maybe I'll, I'll love working with 46 count. I certainly love the appearance of it. And <laughs> um, there's gonna be a lot of leftover, Ugh, pardon me. Um, there's gonna be a lot of leftover fabric when when all is said and done so i probably will i probably will use it um because i don't think i can stand to not use it <laughs> but 46 count is not my jam 36 count is my favorite two over two absolute favorite is 36 count and i like 40 count i have no issues with 40 count one over two um i can still do the sewing method and i think it looks beautiful but 36 count is my absolute favorite and 36 is just just doesn't really work for me Okay, that's a, that's a possible start. Is it? No. Um, so these are an old project that I haven't worked on. These are in one of the in one of the issues of one of the magazines. There's a bunch of pin cushions, like autumn themed pin cushions, and I'm doing them on a cheap Ada, like scraps of cheap Ada, um, and this is one of them. And I've done one of them already. I have I have one of them finished and made into a pin cushion that I hand sewed myself. Um, and here is the like one evening start on another one. And um, I could work on this. I could finish finish this in a couple of sittings probably um, if I if I just made up my mind to do so. And I do like I want to have all the pin cushions done, and I want to do something with them like my vision was like a fall type wreath. Um, I even bought a wreath a couple of years ago. <laughs> 
at Joanne for this purpose. It's like a twiggy type wreath. And um, there's several of them. Are there six of them? I don't know. You saw the picture. So they could go all around, all around that wreath. And that would be, that would be really fun. But I don't know if I'll ever finish them all. So, um, so there's those. Um, this one, this is one of my favorite projects ever. One of my favorite designs ever. Oh, whoop, let me get out the... Wicked Christmas, best, best thing ever. Just absolutely love this design. It's just one of these quirky, quirky designs uh, that's fantastic and it's gonna take me forever to do because the houses, oh my God, the houses. I have a respectable amount done. This is 40 count, one over two, um, Birch Newcastle. My Zweigart, not a hand dyed. It's it's a real nice, it's not the recommended fabric. I forget what the recommended fabric is, but it's close enough. It's a very good color for this, um, for this project. And this is gonna take forever because of these stupid houses. They're so solid and so boring to stitch. Easy, at least. But, I mean, look at them. Look at that solid row of houses. Am I ever gonna finish this project? I don't know. But I do I do like stitching on it. It is it is wonderful, but I've I've started working on the houses because I don't want to leave them to last. Um, everything else was very quick and now the house isn't bogged me down. But um, wonderful, wonderful pattern. It just I just love it. She has several patterns I really like, but when I saw this one, I was like, I have got to have that. And I didn't really pay attention to those, those giant, those giant houses. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, I just love that pattern. Absolutely love it. Okay, speaking of absolutely love. Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow which I um, I made respectable progress on recently, but I would love to work more on it. This is where I am. I started with the center block and then went out to the top corner block. Last time I was working on it. Oh God, look at those colors. Yes, I am doing this in the NPIs. I don't know if I can really say they're worth the money, but they are lovely and they're, they, the color, the quality of the colors on them is, it's significantly different than the DMCs. They are, they are fantastic, especially with these hot colors. Um, and I have mine, I, do. I attached my colors. There's a few that aren't attached because I ran out of these drops. I bought these drops. No, I didn't. I was going to say I bought them from Bendy, but I didn't. I bought them from somebody. I can't remember. can't remember how I got them. But I put all of my, oh my gosh, and the feel of the NPIs is just incredible. Sorry, trying to get him. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Is that not incredible? That's just friggin' amazing. Oh, and they're so soft. And unlike, they're by far, if you aren't desiring of, oops, oh yeah, that's the right place. If you aren't desiring of, um, like, variegation, NPIs are um, by far the nicest that I have experienced, the nicest to work with silk floss. They are, um, it might feel like you're paying too much for them because there's no exciting variegation like you get with something like Gloriana's, but I need to put things away, sorry. Um, but they, they don't break. Some silk floss like Mori, like Krynic Mori, you have to use shorter strands and stuff like that because, because they just, they're fragile. They fray on you as you're working with them. And I find with the NPIs, I don't, that they're super user friendly. I don't have to, I don't have to use shorter strands. Um, they hold together and they look beautiful. They're super friendly. Okay, the next thing I have is 
Universal Monster Sal by the Witchy Stitcher. This is the start I couldn't help myself on when um, when our when our cat died. So, oh, let me show you what it'll look like when it's finished because people like to see that. And here is my start. I did that um, in just one, not one sitting, like not like one day, but one uh, rotation or whatever. Not that I really do a rotation, but I did it over the course of a few days. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> I hate to look at this one, but it is Dark October Stitching. I would like to finish it someday. It is um, Halloween Welcome. Um, I don't have a picture handy, um, but there is, I'm sure there's one digitally. I'll try to show a picture of it when it looked like finished. And, oh, well, you know, looking at this, it's not so bad. The issue is that I have to rip out, I have to rip out the moon. I talked about this before. I got um, new. This is a very old project um, for me. Probably 15 years old, something like that. 12, 15 years old. And um, I ran out of old Krynik and bought new Krynik and they did not match at all. So, um, and of course the old Krynik is a very old dye lot, so I bought more new Krynik in an amount that would be adequate, I hope, <laughs> to finish to finish that moon, but I have to, you can totally see the difference. So I have to rip out the old Krynik and um, start over on the moon, and of course that's not any fun, and that makes me like just not want to touch it. Okay, this one is literally a pain. I love this pattern, um, but I've said it before, so you've probably heard it before, unless you're new. Um, the fabric I chose looks great, but it is um, painful for me to work on. I end up with some repetitive strain issues. I end up very sore when I work on it, but this is the finished product. Hallowed Halloween inspired by like old postcards. Oh, here's a white pumpkin. Yeah, I am working on a white pumpkin. I was like, I'm not working on any white, white, white pumpkins, but here's a white pumpkin. And so this is the fabric I'm using. It looks great. It's just very stiff. Something bought at Joann's, it's MCG something or other um, that you can't get anymore. And, um, and it's really difficult to work with just that it's stiff and it's um i end up like with wrist and shoulder pain when i work on this if i do too much but i don't like i should work on it it's not that big of a project Ugh. and i do love it i really love it someday i want to buy some of those old, like get on ebay and buy some old like greeting cards or postcards um antique ones with the that those graphics on them because I love them. Okay, here my one and only, no, not my one and only project bag. One of my only project bags. And I keep in here, I keep in a pattern called Poison and here's what it'll look like when I finish it, which will probably be never. But, um, and the reason I haven't touched this in a while is because last time I worked on it, I, I put in a hundred stitches and I had to frog it and it was very upsetting and uh, I, it took a lot of frogging time because I'm doing this I believe I'm doing this um, yes I am doing this two over one tent stitch um, on I want to say it's 28 count. Well, it's been a long time because I can't remember what I'm doing. I believe it's 2 over 1 10 stitch. I know it's 10 stitch. Right? Um, it's so fine to look at. Um, I'm, I'm almost certain it's 2 over 1 10 stitch. And frogging that was terrible. It took me like three times as long to frog it as it did for me to stitch it. And it just, I felt very discouraged. 
but I did manage to frog it out. So this is where I am, and I don't know if I'll work on this again or not. I mean, not ever. I love it, but um, I just got so mad when I had to frog it out. It's a good thing I did do the frogging, but it was very upsetting. <laughs> So, um, so it's hard for me to want to work on it again, but it is, it is beautiful. And, um, and if I work on it again and I don't make that kind of mistake, I'm sure that my love for it will come back, but you know, it's just one of those things. Okay. So that is all of my current dark October ish whips. Um, I'm going to try not to start anything new, but I'm not making any promises. So, um, I do have several possibilities of things I could start if I, um, if I wanted to. This one is, um, I think this is a Glen, yeah, this is a Glendon place and it's a kit. And so it's definitely easily startable. Um, it came with beautiful hand painted fabric. Just amazing. Absolutely love that. And all of the floss. So, um, and it's not a huge project. And um, so this one is one that's on my mind to start quite frequently. And the fabric is Butternut by Crosswind Collection, which I've never experienced a uh, Crosswind Collection before. Um, but it is, uh, it is lovely and it's perfect for, for a Halloween piece. So that one calls to me a lot. Um, another one that I could start any time is a buttons and beads kit called Moonlit Treaters. Not really planning to buy anything to be able to start any of these. So this is stuff that I know I could start easily. Um, that either I have fabric in my stash or it's a complete kit or whatever that I could start easily at the drop of a hat. So there's that one. Um, Silver Creek samplers. Still haven't done a Silver Creek sampler yet. Um, scary Things October Brings. And um, this calls for a mix of Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts. Um, so I, like maybe, I definitely have fabric I could, I could use, um, but I don't know. This one might be less likely because I didn't realize that it was so much weak style works. I have all the gentle arts. I could, um, it could, uh, do a DMC, DMC conversions, um, but I might not might not start this one because I think I would want to have the week's dye works before I did it. We'll see. I could definitely do a conversion. This one, I definitely have fabric I can use. This one is Something Wicked by La Dee Da. It's a Shakespeare quote. Also a Ray Bradbury title. Um by the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. And this one calls for NPIs, but I wouldn't use NPIs for this. Even though normally I do, I wouldn't. 90% um, of it is basically DMC 310 or black NPI, which it's just not. Honestly, as much as I love NPIs, it's not worth the money. Um, and I don't even love the colors. Other than the black, I don't even love the colors. Like they're using NPI 252, which I'm familiar with that color, and I just don't love it for the words. And um, yeah, this would be easily, easily converted. I would just use just use um, DMC 310 for the shoe and the border and pick colors for the rest of it. As unusual as it is for me, that is what I would do in this case. So I could easily start this one, and it's only four colors. And I definitely have something that will work in my stash for the fabric. Okay, next one is um, Gather for a Spell um, in the magazine. And I 
I think I hand dyed this fabric myself. And I wasn't super thrilled with the results, but it will definitely work for this project. I think I was going for something different for a different project, like a darker blue, and I couldn't get there with the dye and the fabric. And um, but I looked at it and I thought, well, it'll work with this with this project. Um, so I could definitely um, definitely start that one. It's DMC plus a couple of like specialty things um, that I have something that will work for. So I could start that. Um, the other two I got out. Stitch or Die by Barbara Anna Designs. And I know that's not technically Halloween-y, but you know, it's skull. It's it works, and I've never done a Barbara Anna, as I keep saying, so I I could make that fit. It's Halloween-ish, right? And then the Cricut collection, um, and I'm sure I have fabric I could use. The Cricut collection um, skeleton crew, which I absolutely love. The hold up with this one is I probably do have fabric that'll work, but I'm just not, I'm really, really undecided on what fabric I would like to do this on. So, um, this one I just need some, I need to do some thinking about. Um, but it's all DMC. A couple, looks like maybe there's a couple of, um, I don't know what that is. Cauldron Brew. Um, anyway, I um, think I um, I think I could um, I could get uh, get this started if I really wanted to, but I probably won't because I just really feel like I want to be sure about um, about what I'm what I'm stitching it on. Um, okay, and then there's a couple of. Um, a couple of digital patterns that I have that are also strongly calling to me. Oh, I don't actually, one of them I don't have. One of them I have, it's on the cover of a, a, a magazine issue I will that just came out recently. I will show it to you right here. Love that. And then the other one is, um, is by the Witchy Stitcher and it's a Candyman pattern and I'll show you that. And that one I do have to stitch one of these days because my husband's and my, our first date in, on Halloween night of 1992, we went to see Candyman. <laughs> terrible movie. Even as like crappy horror movies go, it's a pretty terrible one. And um, I, um, we watched it let's see we've been together now this this halloween will be 27 years married 19 when uh february comes up and um anyway no married tw married 20 i guess we married in february of 2000 so february of 2000 20 will be 20 years. Wow, that's amazing. It makes me feel old to say that, but it also makes me very happy to say that. Um, anyway, um, we went to see Candyman, and it's a terrible movie, and we decided to watch it again on our 20th anniversary of our first date, not our 20th wedding anniversary, which hasn't happened yet. We watched it, so we watched it again several years ago, and it was so bad. <laughs> We were like, oh, maybe we should make this a tradition. And then we watched it again and we we're like, we could barely get through it. We're like, yeah, no, it doesn't matter that it's the, the, the movie we watched on our first date. We don't ever have to watch it again. <gasps> but I I would like to stitch the, the, the Candyman, um, Candyman pattern by the Witchy Stitcher. And there's a whole bunch of other like digital patterns I have um, or could get. I have plenty though that I have. And I have some in magazines that I physically have and books that I physically have. And I mean, there are a wealth of things, but I can't show them to you all because all of, all of them to you because we'd be here forever if I did. Okay, so let's speed this up a little. Um, crochet, I'll be brief with crochet. I finished three things. Number one, I 
stitched this amazing rainbow scarf. Look at this thing. I'm so proud of this. I stitched this in like three days because it's double crochet mixed with chain stitch. It's like, um, it's called, um, it's called like a boxed stitch, something, something boxed stitch. Um, and it's, so it's like a row with a couple of double crochets together and then a chain and then a couple double crochets together. And then the next row you stitch five double crochets into the, like underneath the, the, the third, the three chain. Uh, so it's super fast. And I used this um, three weight Lion Brand um, yarn that says cupcake on it that I got at Joanne. And it's super long because I wanted to use the whole, the whole ball on it, but it's beautiful. I love it. Okay, the other thing I finished was my, and it was like, and it's like really cheap. I think I got, I think the yarn was even on clearance. So it's really cheap and beautiful. Um, and then I finished my super expensive, my super expensive scarf. This is a waffle stitch pattern. I showed it to you when it was in the beginning stages last time. And I finished it recently. This is a much slower stitch. It took two skeins of this Blue Moon Socks That Rock. Aren't It's warm, it's nice. Um, yeah. I don't love the look of it in terms of wearing. It's very cool to look at. It was very fun to stitch up to, to see all those colors kind of pool together and create these patterns. That was very enjoyable just to work on. Um, and it's warm and nice. Uh, but I don't, I don't love it. Like in terms of my own personal style, I don't, I don't love it, but I'll wear it. I will wear it anyway. Um, and then last night and this morning I did my first hat and I look stupid in it, but it does fit. And it's just, it's, I'm not a hat. I'm not really a hat wearer. Like I can wear a baseball cap, but, um, I don't know how to wear a hat, <laughs> but here we go. It fits, it fits, it looks dumb on me, I think, but it's warm and um, and I'm like really proud that I learned how to make a hat and I'm gonna try some more hats in different shapes. Um, but I think I look stupid in it, <laughs> so I'm taking it off. Uh, and um, this is just a, I looked up on YouTube, I looked up beginner crochet hat and found a good tutorial that I could follow. And it is my first hat. And so I'm no longer intimidated by the process. I did do my first magic ring to start, um, which was good. Um, and then it, otherwise it's just double crochets for a while, kind of increasing for several rows and then just double crochets for several rows. And then single to finish it off, some single crochets and slip stitch. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, it looks real nice and kind of finished because the end is single crochets and slip stitch. And um, and it fits and, and it's warm and I'm so proud of myself. So that is crochet books. I actually read six books this uh, these past few weeks. It's not as impressive as it sounds. Four of them are things that I don't think anybody else cares about except me. Uh, Robert Parker, the Spencer series, I read, I went back and read his um, first four Spencer novels. They were written in the 70s. They're not as bad as you would think for being written in the 70s by an old, like a, well, he wasn't old at the time, but by a white guy. Robert Parker's dead, but he died kind of young, like in his 50s, I think. Um, died of a heart attack. Um, and somebody else has continued his, his books under his name. Um, but anyway, I went back and read the first four Spencer novels and they were entertaining and well-written, but it's the seventies and they're written by a white guy. So they are, I mean, I think that Robert Parker from the writing, I would say he is fairly liberal, but still it's the seventies and he's a white guy. So, um, they're pretty sexist and they're, for the time, I don't think they were racist that doesn't like that's not really valid to say I mean 
you know, they were racist or they weren't. They were acceptably racist for the time, and I don't think Robert Parker thought he was being racist. Um, I think he considered himself a liberal, but um, but there is some, it's not as bad as you might think they would be for the 70s, but there is some cringeworthy stuff in them. But they were very entertaining and very well written, and, um, and yeah, uh, so I enjoyed them, and I'm going to keep reading them. Um, and then I read, um, Nosferatu, I actually listened to Nosferatu by Joe Hill, and, um, which is a really pretty good sized, like, horror novel, and it was really good. It's my first Joe Hill, who, you probably know, he's Stephen, one of Stephen King's sons, because writing is definitely a family business in that, in that family. Tabitha King is nowhere near as popular as Stephen King, but she's a good novelist. I've re read her in the past, and um, obviously Stephen King, and then Owen Owen King is also Stephen King's son, and I've I don't think I've ever read any Owen King, um, but he's a novelist, and Joe Hill um, is very much following in his father's footsteps, and um, and is a is a really good writer, and um, I very much very much enjoyed listening to No Spore Two. You will. If you listen to it, if you read it, you um, may never think of may never think of Christmas the same, <laughs> especially Christmas outside of Christmas time. It makes Christmas very uh, very <laughs> like unpleasant and creepy. <laughs> but I don't care. I'm not particular particularly traditional, so that doesn't bother me too much. Um, and then I read a bad book. <laughs> I've never read Susan Wiggs. Oh God, my dog out there is gagging. <laughs> I should have closed the door. Anyway, if you hear the gagging, the retching, that's the dog. I don't know what she's up to, but she probably ate something she shouldn't have. Um, anyway, Oysterville Sewing Circle is a new book by Susan Wiggs. She's a very popular author who I have never read and, before, and I will never read again. Um, sorry if you really love her. Um, I'm about to say some terrible things. Um, she was recommended to me, um, and I haven't read any of her um, of her other books, but um, so maybe this is not representative. But Oysterville Sewing Circle, it's very light, like women's centered lit literature, um, but it's pretending to not be light, like. It touches on a lot of very heavy subjects um, that are um, very serious. Uh, drug abuse, rape, racism. Um, there was a lot piled into this book. Um, spousal abuse. Um, um, issues with, you know, undocumented, undocumented families lots and lots of heavy issues in this book but touched on so lightly um as to be like i just wish she hadn't even gone there um feels like the kind of book that somebody would write and somebody would enjoy reading who basically wanted to make themselves feel virtuous you know, it's like this women supporting women and de dealing with a lot of issues, but really not very well and very, very lightly. And there's like, like you're supposed to be feeling really good while you're reading it. And it's like, you shouldn't be reading about all of these things. And first there were like seven or eight different topics, sensitive topics crammed into like this 350 page novel, along with a little romance. Um, and it was just the woman in it is, um, a white woman and she's basically got this perfect white family and this perfect, um, perfect guy that she is going to end up with and, um, and they're all making themselves feel good by 
by helping the misfortunate women who have experienced some other things. And then in the course of her like finding her path in helping others who are less fortunate than her, she kind of remembers a time when she was almost raped, which should have been very like serious. But again, it was touched on so lightly. And then I only gave this a two star on, um, on Goodreads. I almost gave it a three star, but there was a scene that where the, the heroine of the story, um, we're reminded, she's reminded of when she was almost raped and the guy who she eventually, um, gets together with at the end of the book, who, you know, all along she's going to get together with, um, saves her from from this attack which is great that he saves her from it but he is about to get married to like her friend and there's this scene where basically he blames her for the attack by the way she's dressed and um and i think the purpose the whole purpose of of that was for us to realize that they belong together because he he noticed how sexy she was and how she was dressed very sexy um, for the beach <laughs> and that um, that we're supposed to like that's supposed to be foreshadowing of oh they were always meant to be together because he here he is about to get married to her best friend and he can't keep his eyes off her because she is dressed sexy and but really it's just awful because he's blaming her he's blaming her attack for oh you must have wanted it because of the way you were dressed and there's no and we're supposed to still like this guy and there's no real apology and there's no real it was just a oh look he couldn't keep his eyes off her and we know that because he's blaming her for being dressed sexy and um anyway awful book really so, um, I will never read another Susan Wiggs book. <laughs> so, I'm sorry if you like Susan Wiggs. Please tell me if some of her other books, if you've read this one and some of her other books um, are much, much better um, than this one, please let me know. Um, I would love to know if this is like an outlier. Um, I read it because somebody recommended it to me and I was frankly kind of appalled. So um, I will not be I will not be reading any more Susan Wiggs unless somebody convinces me that this is an outlier. Um, okay, so um, I don't know if you're going to see my husband. It's unclear to me whether you're going to see my husband this time. So it'll be a surprise to all of us. Um, oh, um, I had did have a request that I do some talking about um, Alaska and like the difference between living in Alaska and the lower 48 and um, and stuff like that. And I think some people might, more than this one person might be interested in that. So, um, cause it is kind of different um, from a lot of people's experiences. I'm not sure how to go about talking about that, but um, I think I will start just by giving a little bit of history as to how I ended up here. <laughs> um, my history with Alaska. Um, basically, I grew up in San Diego. I grew up in a big sunny city near the beach. And, um, and I was to go to college in California because California is very expensive to go to school in, except it's downright reasonable if you can get in-state tuition. And so my parents wanted me to go to school in California um, because of the in-state tuition perfectly reasonable and they said you have to go to school in California because you have to have the in-state tuition um, so I went to my counselor's office in uh, at my high school and I had an appointment but for some reason she wasn't there she didn't show up and lo and behold she happened to have a catalog on her desk for the University of Alaska at Fairbanks and I uh, picked it up and um, and I just took a glance at it and um, and I looked at their, I had researched tuition costs in California and I knew what the cheapest in-state tuition was in California. It was for Humboldt State in way up Northern California. Um, I don't know if it's the, still the cheapest in-state tuition, but um, my sister was going there and it was the cheapest in-state tuition in California. It was also the farthest you could get away from San Diego and still be at a California college. <laughs> And so, um, 84 miles from the Oregon border. 
and um, all of which I knew. And my sister was going there, and she was five years older than me. Um, and um, so, but I look. I had. I knew the dollar figures, but I looked at the in state, out of state tuition at UAF in Fairbanks, and it was cheaper than the cheapest in state tuition um, in California. And to boot, um, you could get out of state tuition after one year of being in Alaska. It didn't even have to be like most places. It's like you have to be one year or more in a place like without going to school at all. Not so, at least not at that time. In Alaska, all you had to do was be in Alaska, period, for one year. So like, you know, go to stay a summer. And, um, which I figured I could do. So I, um, I was like, well, this will get me way away from my parents and they can't argue with these money, this money topic. <laughs> so, um, I wrote my counselor a note and I took that, took that catalog home and I said, guess what, mom and dad, I'm applying to this school and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get in. And it was the only school I applied for. And my mom was like, not happy, but what could she say? <laughs> you know, I got in, it was cheap and I went and the rest is history. I met my husband there in the first couple of weeks of school. Um, we did not get together immediately. He and I both, um, he dated somebody else before me. I almost dated somebody else before him. And then we both, but we had met like at a phone booth um, we met at a phone booth in the dorm because we were in the same dorm, met at a phone booth like the first couple of weekends of school. And, um, cause that was back in the day. There were no, there were no phones in the dorms. There was pay phones only and you had to make long distance and collect calls and stuff like that. And I was waiting to use the phone and he was using one of the phones. There was a bank of like three phones and he was using one and he was on the phone um, with his, he was talking to his mother and he was talking to his ex-girlfriend on the phone and he put them on hold and he introduced himself to me and we didn't get together right away. Um, other things happened and then we found ourselves single and running into each other. Um, and we, um, ran into each other several times and we finally had our first date on, um, on Halloween and, um, I'd like to say the rest is history. There was a lot of bumps along the way. He and I both had a lot of growing up to do. We broke up a few times. We got back together. There was a lot of, there was some trauma. I did date somebody else in between. He sort of dated somebody else in between. Um, but ultimately we um, ended up, we always came back to each other. And, um, and now we are very happy having raised our, um, having raised our son and, um, happy empty nesters we still enjoy each other's company and um and we're meant to be <laughs> so um but anyway so that is how i ended up in alaska and i think that's enough for for today um if you have questions like specific questions about alaska there are a lot of differences there's cost of living differences there are resource differences um there's a lot of funny odd things about living in alaska if you have any specific questions, um, let me know. I've lived uh, way up north. I mean, I haven't lived up at like, my husband worked on the North Slope, so he could tell you about that. Um, but we've lived up, we've lived in Anchorage, we lived in Wasilla, where Sarah Palin is from. Not sure she's from there, but where she's famous for being from. Um, we've lived in Fairbanks, which is very cold. Um, we've lived in, Juno and we've lived in Ketchikan. My husband is originally from Ketchikan. So anyway, um, we've kind of lived, lived in several different places in Alaska. Um, if you have any questions about Alaska specifically, um, let me know and we'll be happy to try to try to answer them. So anyway, um, thanks for visiting with me. I will be back in a few weeks. I might wait and come back until after October is all said and done, but maybe, maybe I'll come back sooner than that. We'll just see what I feel like. Um, love y'all and talk to you later. Bye-bye.
Maddie and I are out walking in the wetlands area of the airport trail. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna do some more 3D modeling when I get home. Uh, it's taken me, gosh, I think it's gonna take like almost a year to get all this modeling done. But you know, the, the results are pretty good and it's worth it, I think. And you know, ultimately the project will, uh, will be done. <laughs> But uh, I'm learning a lot about 3D modeling though. I'm, my skills are getting way better. I need to keep them up instead of waiting, you know, um, seven years between modeling sessions. If I could just keep doing it continuously, then, uh, then I, I'd be really awesome. Where are you going? Where are you going? Screw that. I'm leaving you. I'm out of here. Look at this, it almost does seem like she's like leaving me. No, no, she's not leaving me. She's just going over to s smell whatever that is. Yeah, come on back. Come back, Maddie. Come back. Oh, holy crap, she's eating something. I better go see what that is. Ah. Well, I hope that wasn't doggy poison, whatever it was that you ate. Wow, she'll eat anything. So my editing computer, my main iMac, has been out of commission for, oh gosh, I don't know, a couple weeks now. And it was out of commission a couple weeks before for the same problem, but I thought that I just needed a new fan, and I didn't need a new fan, I needed a new motherboard. Because um, last time I had it apart to fix the graphics card, I pinched a fan wire which shorted out the motherboard and, and shorted out the fan control, so there were no fans. So I was like rendering and, and it was like, you know, 90 degrees Celsius and the fan wasn't running. So that was kind of bad. But anyway, um, new motherboard will be here probably in a week and then I'll be back in business. In the meantime, you know, I'm just gonna keep 3D modeling. I've got other computers, so that works. But I can't edit. And I've really been wanting to get back into the, to the rough cut of the movie to make a couple of editing corrections that I need to do, uh, you know, to, to sort of fine tune it. It's still too long and I wanna get the uh, length down there uh, to something, you know, a little more reasonable than what it is right now. Ah, I lost the trail. Okay, I think, I think it's coming up here. <laughs> I would really like a treat. Yes, I just ate some strange thing on the beach but I still want a treat and, you know, maybe some water. Although I did just drink from a puddle. I'm thinking treats are good. Treats are really good. Put the damn camera away. All right, all right. Check it out. It's the glacier. It's peeking through the trees. Oh, uh, okay, so this shot here, I'm including this. This was from last Sunday, and I hiked up towards the Mendenhall Glacier on the West Glacier Trail, and I shot this panorama of the area. It was so nice out. 